Hello friends, Coolio here and welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we are checking out One Punch Man World, the new open action RPG gacha game set in the One Punch Man universe. It's a very popular anime out there, one of my favorites. Uh, the other thing too is this game is currently available for Android and iOS as well as on PC. I was I, I was under the impression that was going to be available for Steam, but that's not the case. You have to go and download it from their main website. Um, but so far, I've been enjoying the game. I do have a couple of concerns here and there. Uh, the combat feels a little bit weird playing on PC. Uh, kind of getting used to it. I'll kind of show you that in just a second. As well as I'm a little bit concerned with the monetization in the game. Ooh, actually, I don't want to fight this guy just yet. The Underground King. This is the hard difficulty. I can go down and take on the Underground King for difficulty one. So we can go ahead and start the battle. Uh, right now, for this one specifically, I need at least uh, power level 189. Uh, and with my technical character... Uh, triple Staff Lily, she's at least at two, 296, so I'm good to fight this one. I think the next stage is like 900, you can only take one character in at a time, so it's going to be a little bit a little bit down the road before I can actually challenge that one. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and let's actually talk about the combat. That's probably like the biggest draw of this game. The game has pretty good combat, specifically on uh, when it comes to mobile. The mobile combat's pretty darn good. However, on PC, it feels a little bit weird, and the reason why is there's no aiming reticle you can see right there like on my screen there's no aiming reticle and if i try to like attack in this direction she's just going to automatically go towards whichever enemy she's locked onto so when you have like multiple enemies on the screen it's weird it feels very very awkward and i don't know how to like describe it besides like you actually going in and like playing it yourself so just keep that in mind if you're playing this on pc the action combat is a it just it feels a little bit weird uh, but all the characters, they have like their, their basic action and as well as like a defensive ability. So I have three active abilities and then I've got a defensive ability where I can dodge. Some characters have like a block ability. And then there are armament abilities, I think is what they're called. And I'll get into those in just a little bit, but she has a healing one that I can activate. And then the characters also have ultimate abilities. I am getting my open butt handed to me right now. I don't even know why. Maybe it's because I'm talking. Go ahead and activate this. It's going to weaken him. If you've ever played like a boss fight action game, you know that a lot of bosses have like a gauge and once you decrease it all the way down, you're going to be able to just deal a significant amount of damage. Um, all characters do have ultimate abilities. The ultimate abilities uh, become available once you hit the enemy a certain amount of times. It's not really tied to like how many individual hits that your character makes because like with Lightning Max, he can hit the enemy like a crazy amount of times within like a split second, but it doesn't count every single punch. So do keep that in mind. It's a little bit weird. I don't know exactly how they're counting the hits. But yeah, there's the there's the combat. I just wanted to show you the the probably like the main draw of the game is that combat system. It's pretty good. Um, again, on mobile, very, very good on mobile. On PC, it just feels a little bit awkward, but you'll probably get used uh, used to it pretty darn quickly. Uh, with a lot of, you know, gotcha games, there is summoning in this game. And I am going to do a summoning uh, at the end of this video. Uh, but let's actually talk about characters first. And I'll talk about some of the things I... I'm a little bit concerned with when it comes like specifically the, the monetization in the game. So when it comes to upgrading the characters, uh, the basic way to upgrade your characters is you get these XP cards that you can use and spend to level up the character. Once they get to a certain level, I'll just go ahead and use this one, get here all the way up to level 30. You'll be able to then limit break them. Uh, once you go to limit break, I can't do it right now because my battle tier is too low. Uh, battle tier is something that you'll unlock once you get into the hero association headquarters. Uh, it's something I'm currently working through right now. It's a, basic way to like receive resources to uh to upgrade your character's merit uh, but once you get to certain tiers you'll be able to use the basic in-game currency to limit break the characters which drops their level all the way back down to level one and then increases their max level so probably the next one will be level 40 uh the characters have potential the potential is basically the duplicate system in the game once you get duplicates of the character you'll be able to use it to unlock potential and increase the overall stats and i believe it also increases the overall power of your spe specifically of your abilities and then the merit system is where you gather resources through this uh, this uh, auto battlefield that you can go into. Once you've fought the boss for the first time in the battlefield, you'll be able to go back through and kind of grind it out a little bit. I might come out with a video talking about that a little bit down the line, but you'll get these resources, which you can then use to upgrade the merit of the character, which just gives them increased, uh, increased stats and stuff, as well as an increase in rank. So she's ranked two. I don't believe, yeah. So, my man, let's go ahead and just promote him real quick. I'm going to submit that one, submit that, and promote. And there you go. So he's been promoted. He's at rank two, and then just basic increases to his overall stats and stuff like that. And then I haven't actually loved, I haven't like done basically anything for him right now. So 
I'm not actually using him on my team. And then uh, when it comes to when you jump into the game, all the pre-registration rewards were accepted. And so you're going to be able to get the job hunting version of Saitama. He's honestly not very good, in my opinion. Maybe he gets better down the line, but he just he's he's not good compared to the other characters I have so far. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the impressions. Instead of the armaments, like I was saying before, there's these impressions that you get through the summoning system. So it's kind of like a, a combination of summoning heroes and equipment. Once you get specific ones for care for heroes, you can go ahead and activate them and be able to equip it to this character. So once you've equipped a, a specific impression onto a character, it'll give you passive bonuses like you can see up here, base attack increase. And then when accurate defense is triggered, a shield is generated, blah, blah, blah. So it gives you a passive stat uh, bonus increase for the specific character. And then it gives you an arms skill. Now you'll be able to have three impressions equipped onto the character and you'll actually be able to go through and select which specific arm skill you want activated for that specific battle. So kind of cool. Gives you an option to further kind of customize your character. Um, and you'll only be able to unlock these slots, I believe, once you've unlocked this specific like armament for this character. Uh, so for her, I actually have these two uh, specifically unlocked, but I don't have her SR1 unlocked just yet. But I have these ones equipped. I need to equip that one have that one equipped and then i'll be able to get the increase of the stats as well as an armament skill so like i was saying she has a healing armament skill applies healing to yourself for 12 seconds restoring two percent max each per second is the one i currently have equipped but if i wanted to i could swap over to this one actually it just swapped over to me let's go ahead and equip that one i i want this one equipped because i actually really like that ability so kind of cool i like the kind of customization it also has these training progress marks that you can go through and you can complete these specific training tasks for those uh, for those characters. So, yeah, so far they've got like a lot of content in the game. They've got these big open areas that you can go and explore. They've also got once you head back to the uh, let's go ahead and head back to the um, Hero Association headquarters. Go ahead and move. I can at least show you guys what that looks like. I'm currently going through just the main storyline, but. I did spend like a good hour just doing like side stories and stuff, and it was pretty fun. Like the biography stories, they're pretty in depth and they have unique gameplay aspects behind them that I really like. Uh, this is the commission campaign. This is where you're going to go through and you're going to fight uh, bosses and enemies and stuff like that for uh, for the gears for like the specifically for the progression for the merits. So I'm not going to actually do that right now, but I just want to show you guys where that at. So yeah. A lot of stuff so far in the game. I've barely scratched the surface of it and I've been enjoying it so far. But let's go ahead and actually end the video by doing summons, which kind of leads me a little bit into where I'm concerned. So if we take a look at the shop. There's only really one area that I've seen so far and maybe maybe I missed something else, but only one area where you can actually spend the silver premium currency to get summoning tickets, which is right here. It takes twenty two hundred. Let's go ahead and purchase that for the summoning. And that's it. And that's like a monthly I think, yeah, I think it said that's a, oh, that's a weekly purchase that you can get for there. So just 10 times summon for there, just from the silver premium currency, which is the free one that you earn. The gold one's the one that you actually have to pay for. And that's where I'm going to get a little bit into more depth, because if I go to like the character file exchange, if I want to get summoning tickets, it's going to cost actual premium currency to, to get that. And I don't think I've seen anywhere else to get the free, the get summoning tickets besides those two spots. I might have missed something, but it's kind of weird to me that you can't just buy so many tickets with a silver currency as much as you want and exchange it. You have to literally drop money if you want to do that. And there's a monthly purchase limit. And the game doesn't really give you a whole lot of the tickets as you're playing through it. Just for like this event alone, just by jumping into the game um, for the events that are going on in the game right now for like the seven day sign in as well as for. Uh, the pre-registration rewards, that's where I got most of my tickets. And even then, I barely have enough to do 30 summons, I believe. I should have enough to do 30 summons. Yeah. And that was after playing the game for like a couple of hours. Here's the thing that really bugs me, though. They have this starter selection. And you've probably seen this in other gacha games where you can go through and summon like a certain amount of times and you can save a pool of characters that you've summoned and set it aside and then go through and keep refreshing it. And then you can pick three. And then you can choose out of those three which one that you want. So it's a great way to get the characters that you want. It's an unlimited number of times you can do this. I've seen a lot of games do this. This is the first time I've seen a game do this that makes you have to pay for it. I think that's absolutely crazy. 
I, I don't like that. It just it really, really cheapens the experience for me when so many other games have something like this and they just give it to you for free right at the beginning. Sure, it's, you know, to draw your attention, to really pull you in. They, they block this right off the beginning and like basically make it a quest for you. Like, hey, here's an announcement. Here's a notification. You still have the starter selection draw. Yeah, but you got to drop money to do that. And you know what? Let's see, 260. How much is that going to cost if I want that much? 630. So it's probably going to cost me, holy crap, two, at least 200. Let's see, 27. It's going to cost me somewhere around like 20, 35, 30, four, like 40 bucks, $45. Just that's ridiculous. That's a discounted too. Absolutely disgusting. I think that's just, that's wrong. Anyways, let's go ahead and actually do a regular draw. Um, I don't even know what the details are for this. Let's see. What's the, it's a, the base probability of obtaining an SR item is 5.1%. SR character is 2.55%. Uh, let's see. Is that basically it right there? SSR item is 0.6%. I don't know. Not, not super into what they did there. Go ahead and just do our draw. Pull the lever. And you know what? I would be fine with it if they had better ways of getting the summoning tickets in the game. Like instead of like making that one thing like the 10 times summoning tickets like a one week purchase, just make it unlimited. Let us spend our free premium currency on whatever the heck we want. So, OK, we're getting a couple of impressions here. Job well done. I'll take care of myself. And these are specifically tied to characters, by the way. I don't know if you noticed that before, but yeah, character deployed. This is for Smile Man. And it looks like we did end up getting a character. I don't know what like any of the summons are, so. Like, I don't know what the animations are for like a really good character. But we got Spring Mustache. A uh, mustachio, I mean. So we got one SR character. Okay, let's go ahead and keep drawing. There is... I, I believe there is a um, an achievement if you summon for the first 30 times that it gives you one free summon ticket, which again, which is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, looks like we probably just got one more SR character. We'll see which one that is. And I think everyone, once you log in the second day, you will get a, um, you'll get Genos for free. So that is kind of cool. But we'll, I don't know how good he is, but yeah. So we got Smile Man, which is a duplicate. I already have Smile Man. And then the last 10 times uh, summon. Come on, give me something crazy good. Like, really hook me into this game. If I don't get anything good, I don't know if I want to spend 45 bucks just to do a 10 times summon. Okay. So. Probably going to be the very last one on every single time. Yes, let's freaking go. We got Genos. Which is awesome that I that we got him, but is this the same Genos that I'm going to get tomorrow anyways? Because that would suck. <laughs> Basically just getting a duplicate of Genos right off the bat. And there are different versions of different characters, so keep that in mind. Uh, Genos, nice. I got a new exploration avatar, which is up here. Which is unlocked for Genos, so if I click on him and Spring Mustachio, I can swap out. And now I can run around as Genos, which is awesome. And this is over here. This is what I was talking about. Um, looks like this is Cyborg of Justice. This might be a different Genos than the one that I currently have. It looks like it is. Uh, and I got two summoning tickets for doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Not a lot of summoning. I only get three more from the Hero's Journey. And then I'll get Genos for free. But that's a different version of the Genos I currently have. This one is... just the. I think this is just the base Genos. And then the... Daily login event. If I remember where that's at, that's over here in the events page. Um, I will be getting the regular. You have a chance to draw SR character genos, or does that mean I am gonna get the SR character genos? I don't know. There you guys go. One Punch Man World. I've, I've I'm liking it. Like it's a good game. Just a little bit concerned about the whole monetization behind the game. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. If you guys want to see more videos of One Punch Man World, let me know. Also, if you like this video, hit like. If you loved it. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Well, friends, my name's Kulio, and I'll see you next time.